I, I did want to say right off the bat, so I've been doing the big chat, right? I keep saying the, it's just big chat. It's a big chat. Keep doing big chat. And uh, prior to that, I did like the interview videos and they're, they're on a separate playlist because to me, they're two separate things. Um, and so I kind of wanted to explain that because I feel like I've not done a great job explaining that to both the guests and to the viewers. The interviews were very specifically like, I bring you here and I'm going to ask you about your content and about how you make your content and um, then they're going to be edited together as best as I can and to be like entertaining and you know keep you engaged um the big chat was originally going to be named this is not a podcast uh because i just wanted it to be like we sit down and we just talk hold on let's see if i can oh drinking water while laying down is weird anyway um so that, that was the idea in mind, is that I'm not interviewing people on the big chat. We are talking. We're just having a conversation, we're getting to know each other, and maybe it'll be a little bit more about our content, because we know for a fact that that's something that we share as something we enjoy and something that we do. Um, but the intention isn't to just just talk about content unless that's what what we came and wanted to talk about that day you know like um i think the the one with leia is a great example because we just kind of talked about we just bullshitted about our childhood and told stories about our childhood and, and i'd like to get um it to feel a bit more like that where it's just it's just talking so with that in mind this episode is just gonna be me talking um and just kind of saying things and you know if you don't don't enjoy that that's cool This is the Big Chat, hosted by your host, the one who's hosting, Ben, a.k.a. Heffelmeyer. So I'm doing it by myself this time. Probably gonna be a little extra pauses in between everything. I kind of feel like, um... I feel like I'm Curtis Connor, recording an episode of the Curtis Connor podcast just sitting by myself. I do have, like, a list of things that I'm going to try and talk about, but um, my voice is still kind of shot from <laughs> recovering after the 100 subscriber stream. Um, I drank ale and answered all the questions that I was asked, and uh, then just spent the whole night just puking my guts out. It was insane. I went and laid down at like 11.30 and then got up every 30 minutes and like puked three times and then chugged water and crashed back in bed. Um, and so I, I didn't even, I didn't even have a voice the next day. I barely had a voice. I did like a little editing stream and then Premiere was just, just, crapping all over me it just didn't want to do something and it was like a corrupt video file or something like that i figured it out so i was able to edit the video and uh right so i hit 100 subscribers which is awesome but uh this is while like our home is going in a period of mourning and uh due to like family stuff and then the cats get sick and then there's fleas in the home so i'm dealing with all of that <laughs> and i get a message from jean and he's like Psst, you hit a hundred and i was like 
Oh my god! I am in the middle of a four-hour defleeing binge right now, spraying shit and uh, you know, drying clothing, and then we had the pest control over. It was... It's been weird. It felt like... I, I legitimately was thinking, it was like, is this like a karmic thing? <laughs> Does the universe not want me to grow on YouTube? That's what it is, right? It's the universe plotting against me. <laughs> Probably not. Just a coincidence. I've been helping strays out, and I shouldn't be, because they have fleas. Anyway, other than that, I've been cooking a ton lately. Um, and, like, good meals, you know, not just, like, throwing together sandwiches or anything like that. I made a uh, white chicken chili, and then I made a stuffed pepper soup. My manager got me that recipe. It was her grandma's recipe. And then I did uh, I did chicken noodle soup <laughs> the day after I hurled. I made a bunch of chicken noodle soup. And then I made gumbo, and I've been freezing all of these. Because we're currently looking to go... We're currently looking to uh, live in a new place. And... Uh, I don't want to cook during that time period when we're when we're moving. So it's like I'm just going to freeze a couple of different meals and then we'll have them and they're delicious. So I'm super excited for them. Uh so I've been I've been cooking a bunch and that's just been Tell you what, I just find cooking to almost be like a spiritual experience. There's something about it when I'm like I'm making something complex and I think of all the years of human history that have poured into making this dish like how how many different trials and experiments and generations of learning did we go through for me to make a roux to make a gumbo like it's kind of insane it's it's actually um really wild and then i'm like no other animals cook like this that is a specifically human thing to cook some other animals might like crack open nuts and stuff like that but uh, they don't really like prepare food in any other way and we have so many specific ways that we prepare our food it's it's uh i don't know it's kind of mind-boggling sometimes so i've i've been really enjoying cooking um and you may already know that i like cooking just because we make cooking type videos but uh, I don't know, to me there's something nice about, like, especially once you've done it for a while. I think I wasn't good at it for a long time, or I could be good at it, I just didn't do it a lot, so I didn't know the basics. And uh, after doing it for a long time, you just start to build uh, vocabulary and, like, mechanical foundation of how to assemble different kinds of things and if then you just go into the kitchen like staring at your ingredients with an open mind of the methods that you know then you can just kind of make something different and interesting um i don't know that's what i like to do so eating well i don't know what i'll eat today i do have some leftover gumbo so i might eat that I've not eaten breakfast yet. Maybe I should have done that before I recorded, but you know, it's keeping me in survival mode. <laughs> uh, I wanted to kind of mention videos that I had planned coming up. So I've I've talked about uh, the AI image generation, and I liked that video a lot. But uh, I want to do three videos that are kind of related to that. I want to do uh, a video where I just kind of round up. Well, for, the first one will be AI archives, where we go through a social intelligent AI that have been attempted to be constructed um, in our history and the ones that exist today and kind of where we stand with those, right? Where, where do we stand on sentience with AI? And then I want to make another video talking about 
uh, robot roundup. What, what are all the robots that currently exist? Um, and then make a video talking about uh, kind of the inevitability of AI being present. Hey, buddy. How you doing? In the world. Don't, don't bump the microphone, though. You can bump into me all you want, but please don't bump the microphone. This is laser. There is a camera on us right now. I know you don't know that, but... Um, because as I see it, uh, AI are coming. Sentient AI are coming. And uh, to, to be amongst us, they will want... Uh, to have physical forms and so what physical forms do we currently have that they could they could reside inside of essentially is what i'm looking at and then and then kind of talking about um the implications of of having something else sentient i'm really interested in this topic um i've been interested in this topic since i was in high school uh specifically like the social aspects of it i'm not i'm not like a technical engineer I, I'm not going to be able to explain the way that AI work in a super in-depth fashion, uh, but I don't think, like, I don't need to be a brain scientist to understand, like, social dynamics and stuff like that. So, so that's something that's, like, coming up for me. Um, that I, I hope to actually record some of that today, at least the AI one. I don't know if I'll be able to get to the robot roundup and definitely won't be able to get to the third. And I think I want to sit for a second and really kind of write a script. For those that don't know, I don't typically write scripts. I may write bullet points. Um, and I think it's come from doing the interviews. I've gotten a bit more confident in, uh, in my, in my improvisational ability when it comes to speaking, um, where I'll write down a question. If I have a follow-up, if I want to say something, then I can. And especially like the big chats, I'll just write bullet points where if I sense that, you know, because most of the time when I'm doing a big chat, it is a conversation, but it's one of the first that I've had with that person. Um, I, I, I have sensed from some of the people when we started up, I'll kind of be like, you got any questions, anything you want to say before we start up, you know, make sure we're kind of warmed up to each other's feeling before we start talking, you know, that way we have more natural conversation. But I think most of them um, kind of agree with me where it's like, well, it'll be the most natural if we just start, you know, we just start recording and asking each other questions and stuff like that. And, uh, I lost my train of thought because this cat keeps coming up in my face. Um, hey, buddy. Hey. How you doing? Hmm? He's been feeling a lot better. I was really worried about him. He was just lethargic and it's not coming out of his nose and... He's just a needy cat. He, he just needs love all the time. So I was, I was thinking about this the other day. I have done a lot of collaborations. I've worked with a lot of people. I have, um, I worked with an editor really consistently at one point. Um, my entire Silver Creek Falls playlist is edited by Cine. Um, and I think she did a really good job, uh, but there's some people who who are pretty big on like um, when you're growing on YouTube, you need to do the work by yourself because you need to understand the work that it takes to grow. And I think that's fair, but I think that's also like saying like you want to make music, you have to do it only by yourself you cannot get in a band until you understand what it means to grow and it's just like it i think it depends on one your own abilities not everybody has the same abilities as everyone else and two what you want to make and what you think will make the best product um and i get like it's not practical 
if you're trying to be fair to your editor and you want to commission every single thing that they do. You know, you want to pay them for what they do and you're you're small, it doesn't make sense. It's not practical. But um you know, you you still I I looked at it early on as like it's like I'm being a producer for my content essentially. If I pay an editor to edit something for me, if I pay anyone to do anything for me, if I said I paid a thumbnail artist to make me thumbnails, you know, you are helping produce your content and it doesn't necessarily remove your creative autonomy from it. It's just uh, adding somebody else's creativity to the mix and that's just going to end up making a stronger product. It's just the nature of that. Um, I've put boxes up around my PC to try and mitigate its sound and the laser's currently climbing through the boxes. I'm getting lost. Anyway, I was I was thinking about that and then thinking about like how it makes sense that as people grow, they start to there's many different um creators who have made like production companies. Not necessarily like they, they don't necessarily call themselves that, but like content houses or, or whatever you would have where there's a bunch of different creatives in a building that can make stuff together. And I think the difference between like a content house and like a production company is, um, dude, don't stop, stop destroying stuff. You, you need to get out of here. See, look, now you're caught on the, hold on, get out of here, get, shoot. Oh man, I have this extremely precarious setup, and now it's even more precarious. Uh, anyway, the difference between a content house and production company is like, a production company uh, has a similar goal to kind of like, they aren't the stars, they're making something else that is the star. Uh, and content houses are like, we are all the stars, and we will work together to make stuff that uh, features us all as stars. Dude, you're gonna destroy everything. <laughs> My cat is a destructive force of nature. Anyway, so I've been thinking about, like, what does it look like if I continue to grow? And... I want to essentially, like, build up a business around me. Because... Uh, it's nice that YouTube is there for people to lay on the floor and record themselves and post that for people to enjoy and watch. And I think that YouTube or a YouTube-like thing will exist for years and years and years and years to come. Um, and it makes the uh, ability to distribute work in video format extremely easy but uh i don't necessarily always want to be reliant on youtube you know there's i think of like corridor digital who has their own channel where they're making a lot of the stuff they used to post on youtube they're making on that channel and then people are subscribing so that they can watch it and they're making way crazier stuff than they used to as well and they're continuing to essentially be like production company that makes quality content and I think I am far I'm you know I'm not I'm not corridor digital <laughs> I I am not making stuff of that caliber at this point but doesn't mean I don't hope to um I think I'm learning a lot right now and I'm growing a lot as a creator and I, I'm coming to realize that it's not just, it's not just video making, you know, it's, it's, it is a form of film, and that may sound pretentious and stupid, but, but it is, you know, you've got cameras, um, screen recording is a type of, of, it is like, it is video recording, it is digital recording, but it is still a type of film, you're still making, um, film adjacent or TV adjacent product and I would love to get more creative with that in the future and use more 
uh, known techniques and experiment with techniques to make interesting things. Um, something I said in the 100 subscriber videos is like the, the light VFX really did kind of change my view as to like, what can I do with this camera? Other than just set it up in a tripod and point it at myself. And you know, what, what other shots can I get? What other, um, you know, what, what more can I make from this thing? So I've been, I've been thinking about that a lot lately and what it looks like to have more people around you who have other expertise who can help you make stuff like that. I don't know what that looks like in a concrete form, but it's something, it's something that I have been thinking about uh, quite a bit. I think about, like, I don't know if this is the case for everybody else. Uh, I was talking to my girlfriend about this, and I don't think she feels the same way, but uh, have you ever, like, watched a bad movie, a really bad movie, and um, you're just like, damn, this, this sucks. And then you're like, you know, the bar for entry is actually pretty low. I could make something that sucks. I could maybe make something that's better. You know, I obviously, we don't need much to try to make something. Does that ever, does that ever happen to anybody? I know that, like, very often I will watch bad things and I will get inspired by them because I'm like, I can make, I can make something like this and potentially make it even better. Like, not necessarily that I'm going to make the best thing ever, but when you watch something terrible, you watch a horrible sci-fi movie like Plan 9 from Outer Space, then you're just like, well, I could easily make this or better. And if it's better than Plan 9 from Outer Space, then that's pretty good. Like, <laughs> especially if I've never made anything before, like, I don't know. Maybe that's a bad way to look at it. Maybe it's better to get inspired off of really good things and be like, I hope to try to make something really good like that. But when I see uh, a piece of content or a movie or a TV show and it's just bad, it's just so bad, I'm like, oh, maybe I'm not as terrible at this as I thought I was. Maybe I'm a little bit better at this than I thought I was because I can at least envision how I would make this or maybe even make it better. Um, and and that, that does kind of inspire me. I don't like ragging on things because I think I, I like watching bad movies and bad TV shows and stuff like that. Like it, it is <laughs> some form of media that I enjoy. Um, and I don't, I'm not really the kind of person who's going to be like, oh, this fucking sucks. Like, Get the fuck out of here. Stop making... You fell off. Like, I'm not going to be like that. Um, I might laugh and say that this is not good, but but I can still enjoy it. Uh, I, I have that, that way about me to just enjoy things. I've also been thinking, um, I have been thinking about growth and, um, what it really takes to, you know, cause if YouTube is one of the easiest places to distribute your content, then the algorithm is like, it's kind of like the boss of distribution, right? The algorithm is saying what, what, what goes and what doesn't. What will meet the eyes of uh, people who haven't seen it before and what will not? And there's, you know, a lot of mystery surrounding the algorithm. But I think the biggest thing that everybody knows and everybody says is consistency. Upload consistency is pretty important, but not the most important. Content consistency is just kind of known to be the most important thing. The algorithm knows what to do with you when you make similar things repetitively. 
because then you fit into a specific category and it's able to hand that out more effectively. That's just, that's known among creators. It's stated openly by YouTube. Uh, you want to find a niche and you want to fill that niche. Um, you want to make content that uh, is a little unique, but mostly consistent. Because people who like that and who like you will find your content and then they will subscribe. Now, I have grown to 100 subscribers and I am extremely excited about that. And I think that the people who have subscribed, uh, I think that we're on the same page. That I'm making just kind of whatever I want. And you'll see different things that come from my channel all the time. I think we're on the same page with that. You know who's not on the same page? It's the algorithm. The algorithm doesn't fully understand. And I and I know this based on the small amount of analytics that are available to me and uh, where people are finding the videos, who is watching the videos, mostly returning subscribers. Um, and it's mostly from... Um, their browse features. So that's nice. I'm showing up in their browse features. Uh, but it's not getting distributed to um, many people outside of that. And we'll see in in the coming times how, how that how that continues to unfold. But so far, that's been the case because I've just made lots of different things. My thumbnails have been very varied. So that's one thing I'm going to try to work on, is having a little bit more consistency with my thumbnails. Um, I don't know exactly how that's going to help me, other than if people see a thumbnail, they don't click on it, and then they see another one, they may correlate that that's me, and they're like, oh, they're trying to feed me this dude, maybe I'll give him a chance. I don't know. But there was a part of me that stopped for a little bit and was like, should I... Should I try and find a niche? Like, should I try and niche down? Because there's even, like, there was a YouTuber who gave advice. Um, I think this was Aaron Hansen. He's like, if I could make YouTube a YouTube channel again, I would niche down into one specific thing. And I would grind that thing so hard. And I would get you know, uh, I think it was like 100,000 subscribers. And then from there, do whatever you want. Um, or at least start to experiment with other things. And that's not, that's not the only person who's given advice like that. Um, that's like, you should just, you really need to find one thing and you just need to go gung-ho into it. And I just, I... I've not had an interest in doing that. And I, I do fear that it uh, it will hurt growth. And I know that it's not all a numbers game. And I think that's a big reason why I've not done that. But I, I have to be honest with myself and say, if I want to do entertainment full time, if I want to make stuff full time, then I need to be... Uh, making money off of it as if it was a full-time job you know as as if it was my current job or it'd have to probably be better because I'm gonna have to like pay for health insurance and stuff like that just just very realistic things that's like if I really want to do this constantly and consistently and I don't want to have to dedicate other energies and time to a different job then I have to meet I have to meet a specific income threshold and I'm meeting zero income threshold on this. In fact, I've hit better income thresholds on Twitch. And it's it's funny because like I love making videos. And I, I like streaming a lot. But it's not the same as making videos for me in a creative sense. It's actually much more of a social fulfillment than it is a creative fulfillment um, socially. Twitch is a, a freaking blast. Uh, I don't get that same social enjoyment when I make a video. But I do get a different creative... Uh, 
I, I feel more positive about myself creatively when I make a video than when I stream. Uh, so it's funny <laughs> because I like streaming less than video making. And the video making that I've been doing has been all over the charts, right? So what I love to do is just make a bunch of random stuff all the time and then post that. And that is not a growth success strategy, nor is it getting me anywhere closer to having content creation full time. I like to do streaming, and that is closer to getting me to content creation full time than making YouTube videos. I do not like niching down, or at least the idea of it. I just don't even know what I would niche down into. And the, and I don't like that. And that is supposed to be the, like one of the biggest things to get me to doing this full time. So it's like there's like a gradient of what I love doing as a video maker and what I don't like to do and how close that uh, has has a perception of getting me to doing this full time. So that's been a little like maddening inside of my head is like looking at that gradient and like streaming's fun. Streaming's a good time. I just feel like I don't know. I did the recording while I was streaming and I enjoyed that. That was fun. So I think about going and doing that again, but the thing is when I'm streaming, I'm a bit more myself. When I'm recording, I I adopt speech Ben, as I like to say, and speech Ben is going to say things in a very specific way, and he's going to go on very specific rants, and he's going to say things in just like a different fashion. And then when I'm streaming, I'm talking to people. I'm, I'm much more just talking. Maybe I need to, I don't know need, I don't know if there's like a small blend that needs to occur. But the issue with that is I don't want to be speech ban all the time, you know? <laughs> I don't want to be ranting to people all the time. Because uh, that's just not, I don't know, that's just not who I want to be in my personal life. I don't know. I think well, one thing that's going to change for certain we're going to find a new place. And ideally, there will be three bedrooms. Right now, my setup is in our bedroom. I'm on the floor of my bedroom. And uh, having my own space separate from our bedroom, I think will allow me to set up different things, different types of gags or bits or concepts. Um, I can use it more as an actual studio space than the bedroom, which has limitations, because I can't move the bed, I can't move the dresser, you know. Um, I don't want to disturb the whole space for a day, two days, because we want to come here and sleep, like, and we want it to be a place of rest. I want it to be just as much as Aaron wants it to be, so. But that that's going to change for certain. And then... I don't know. I mean, I'd, I really would like to start streaming regularly. It's it's both that I like it and it is socially fulfilling in a way that YouTube isn't. And I, and I realized that when I was doing the 100 subscriber, I was just like, man, getting to talk to people is... It, it's fulfilling. And it... You know, when someone is there and they're encouraging you and they're watching you while you make something, it, it's it's really reassuring that um, that I feel like I'm making something good, you know? Even if I'm not 100% happy with what kind of a product the stream is, other people seem to enjoy and I can grow and I can, I can make something better. And so maybe that's what I just need to do, is I need to focus on coming up with specific ideas for stream and then just doing those and just having it be a thing where we do a, an event, we look at something, I don't know. I'll need to think about it more, but um, I, I want to get back into streaming more regularly. Because I want to be able to 
take advantage of any opportunities that I see that, uh, that aren't, you know, like grading to me or go against who I am <laughs> that will, will help me grow. And if I'm seeing growth on Twitch, um, then I should, I should embrace that. You know, I should, I should lean into that a little bit. As opposed to every other time that I feel like I've gotten growth on Twitch, I've been like, Ugh, I don't know, streaming's not my favorite, I should just do what my favorite is, but, but I love all the people on Twitch, that's, that's the thing, is like, just because it's not my favorite form of content making doesn't mean it's not fulfilling in a different way, and I just need to remind myself that, like, I don't know, it's been a weird time. I don't even know if I've recorded for an hour. I can't can't see the camera from here. I've been staring up into these ring lights the whole time. I gotta make myself something to eat. Hmm. I wanted to do a little thank you to Elleran. For, for working with me and making these songs. Uh, that, the interactions with Elleran, you know, he's made my outro song for my other videos, and he's made the big chat song. Um, that gave me confidence. That gave me a lot of confidence as a creative to... Um, I know, it... Like, it is sound, Elleran, if you see this, this may sound weird to you, but it was kind of like a dream come true. A game that I had played growing up, um, and a soundtrack that I loved, even into, uh, you know, when I went to contact you, because I, I, I had been listening to that soundtrack, and I was like, I would love to have a song like this um, for, for what I'm making, you know, and <laughs> then getting to work with you, and... Uh, not only, you know, commission a song, but then getting to, uh, getting to have you on the big chat and talk with you and, uh, it, it opened my eyes and it made me go, you know, sometimes you just got to take a chance and ask, you know, sometimes you just got to ask somebody that, uh, you respect if they'd be willing to work with you, um, because you don't know. You don't know what the answer is. They might be. Uh, you might just psych yourself out thinking that they won't. But, um, I don't know. That was, that, that really uh, pushed me. That made made me very willing to be, who who is a guy now that will just message somebody and be like, Hey, I know you've probably never heard of me. Do you want to come on and do a big chat? And, uh, not get, like, self-conscious when somebody says no, because, like, obviously, they've never, <laughs> they've never heard of me before, but being confident when I ask that, like, I don't know until I ask, and, and it's okay if they don't want to, like, it's not that big of a deal, there, there's other people who will say yes, and, um, as I continue to grow, the likelihood that they're willing to will, will grow as well. Uh, but it's, it's more about the confidence in the ask than, um, I don't know, to, to me, there's a little bit more in that, like, the leap of faith, and then, if it doesn't work out, that's okay, if it does, that's awesome, that's, that's super cool, but if it doesn't, you know, there, there will be other opportunities to work with other people, and potentially that person in the future, so, um, you know, no, no, no bad blood to, to anyone who said no. I, I want to be very clear about that. Uh, or anybody who's like had schedule conflicts or something like that. No bad blood. Uh, we all got our own shit going on. Hmm. This has been fun. It's been a little rambly. There's been some pauses. I don't know what kind of editing I'm going to have to do for this, but maybe I won't edit it at all, maybe there'll just be pauses, and you'll just hear me, hear me rambling for, I don't know, an hour, 45 minutes, 30 minutes, be 
crazy if I was only talking for 30 minutes. We need have a band recommendation. This isn't a band style that I would normally listen to. Um, someone asked Drew Gooden what vinyls he had hanging on the wall on Twitter. And some people came in clutch and were like, they're this and this. And then he was like, but they're also this and this. You missed some. And I looked up one of them. Um, Royal Coda. And uh, just... I don't know, vibes, man. It's been a weird week, so, like, having having kind of intense, fast music with, like, complicated melodies and just, like, pounding vocals, that's been something pretty awesome to listen to this week. <laughs> kind of vent out some of those emotions. So, yeah, go look up Royal Coda. Uh, Royal Coda. C-O-D-A. Anyway, I appreciate anybody uh, who's subscribed at this point. Oh, if you're watching this, be prepared, because in my next videos, I am going to do the YouTuber thing of um, plugging myself at, right at the beginning of the video, being like, hi, my name is Ben, a.k.a. Heffelmeyer. Today, we're doing this. Uh, if you enjoy the content, please feel free to like and subscribe. Without further ado, let's get into it kind of thing. I don't know if that's exactly what I'll say, but it's going to be something like that. I'm going to see what happens when I just keep asking, because I, it's weird when you ask, people do it, and so you just kind of, I, I feel like you do kind of have to solicit yourself. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to try. I'm going to try it. We're going to see what happens. If not, it's okay. If it, like, if it doesn't pan out into anything, but I figure at least I'd try, um, Because like I said, I don't want to grow. Um, but I myself as a creator need to grow and make new things as well. So I'm sure I'm sure I'll see growth in tandem with that. I, I have positivity about this moving forward. I've not met the goals that I had prescribed myself at the beginning of 2020 when I first started doing this. Um, but I have I have remained positive and Honestly, it's it's been <sighs> hitting 100 is just meant a lot. Like it's it's really small in the scheme of YouTube, right? But I I think of 100 people filling a room and watching me play a video, like, that's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. Um, that's more people than I have in my family. That's <laughs> probably more friends than I've ever had, like, in one time. That's a ton of people. So I don't, I don't want to undercut how much that milestone has meant to me and how much the support from everybody viewing has meant to me by just being like I want to grow I want to be more um it's just it's just with those goals of growth in mind I do want to keep going like I this isn't like I wouldn't be heartbroken if I didn't grow from here but uh I think I, w I would be frustrated. You know, I know it's it's kind of a pipe dream in its own right, but it is still a dream. I don't know. I think I've probably talked enough. <laughs>